Okay, I think it's, uh, I have one o'clock uh, via iPhone time, which is the time that seems to rule the world. So we'll go ahead and, and get started here today. Uh, my name is Jess Zelmer. I'm one of the, the board members uh, from PAC. I'm going to be moderating today's call. Um, number one, thank you so much for taking the time out um, to, to sit down and have a discussion with your fellow uh, certified PAC providers. We're just thrilled uh, to have you here. Um, the goal today really was to get this group of people together um, particularly during such a, a challenging six months that the pet care industry has uh, experienced and get, get you all together to have a discussion um, on, on how we can manage things, um, how to leverage our certification and just really grow as a profession. Um, you guys are the leaders in the profession with, with taking that PAC certification and uh, what better way than to, to all collaborate to see how we can move through the next six months together. Um, so thank you for joining us. Um, we're happy to have you. As I mentioned earlier, I need to start the recording. I have a big post-it note saying start recording um, and I neglected to do that. So let me uh, go ahead and do that here. Okay. Um, so um, again, this is a new format for us. Uh, typically when we have our, our monthly seminars, uh, all the participants are muted and it's just the presenter uh, that's speaking. Today, we are going to try and unmute everybody. So we did keep this group intentionally small uh, so that we, we could see how the unmuted format goes. I would ask that if you have a tremendous amount of background noise uh, to mute yourself, but whenever you're ready to talk, uh, feel free to unmute yourself. If you're actively talking, we don't care about background noise, so dogs can be barking in the background uh, as you ask a question or answer a question or, or just uh, participate in any way. Um, so who do we have here today outside of our PAC certified um, um, professionals? We do have some board members here as well. We have Amy Hillis. Um, of, uh, of Social Pet in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. We have Stephanie Shipley, who is also a board member, vice chair, um, who owns uh, a great pet care center up in Canada called Call and Order. I see we have Carrie Campbell, uh, our top dog here at PAC, our chair. Uh, she's got a pet care center in uh, Alaska. And I think that is all the board members that are on here. Um, so this call today was really the, the brainchild of Stephanie Shipley. So Stephanie, I thought that you, you might wanna kick it off as well, just with some opening words um, about why you felt this call was so important as our vice chair and our head of marketing. Um, so let me make sure everybody's unmuted. And then Stephanie, you should be able to unmute yourself. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, you know what, I had the uh, distinct privilege of uh, um, working with the IDPSA on their virtual meet and greets as it kind of toured around Canada and the United States and internationally. And there were some really good ideas that came out of that. And um, as a result, you know, one of the, one of the big benefits of uh, being PAC certified is the fact that we have the opportunity to recognize one another as you know leaders within the industry that share the same code of ethics and so so things that we're trying things that we're doing in our facilities um, are setting the setting the bar for pet care in our industry and um and what what a what a better way to to, to do that than to do it together um, so I look at that and I'm like, let, you know, let's bring some people together to share, you know, how are we getting the most out of our certification? Because certification, third party independent certification is a really big deal and achieved actually by very few. Um, we are on this call, we are the elitists in the pet care industry. 
And I would love to know and get some additional ideas and maybe share some of my own on how we are, how we're getting the message of the importance of certification in the pet care industry, a virtually unrelated, unregulated industry. How are we getting that out into, into our communities? How are we using it to make our business better and reduce our costs and like, and maybe things that people haven't thought of. So let's get together and, and kind of have an open discussion on how we can, you know, steal each other's ideas. Um, for things that are working uh, around the globe. Yeah, that's great. And Stephanie, why do you mind kicking us off? Because I know folks are always a little bit shy to be the first one to talk, but I know that you are not. Um, but do you want to kick it off and, and just tell us what have you done um, to promote PAC in, in your community up there? Can you share some of those ideas? I know you've had a lot of success. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we. You know, when, when I first became certified back in 2016, I think, I was a provider level certified. I've since then obtained my operator level certification. But, um, you know, one of the things that, that I'm really proud of is that as a result of how we have communicated the importance of PAC certification, we are now officially, according to uh, veterinarians, local rescues, and shelters, the number one referred to organization for overnight boarding, dog daycare, and training. So we get more referrals than anyone else. Um, and there's a couple of things that we've done to do that. So I'll kind of list off, you know, the things that I have done here that people might want to try or not. Um, first of all, when we became certified with every staff member, um, that has become certified, we did a press release to our local paper. So I, I think pack, I think we have a, a pre for in the welcome package, like a press release that you can just kind of send off to your local paper and, and showing them and telling them that it really is a big deal. You're one of only a few hundred on the face of the planet that has achieved this level. Um, so we should be celebrating that in our communities. We also add, add Stephanie, we do have that press release. If anybody needs it, it's a done for you press release. You just plug and play, plug in your name, uh, your your uh, your pet care center, and it's ready to go. Um, you should have received it in your marketing packet. If you don't know where that marketing packet is, uh, just contact us. Sorry to interrupt, but go ahead, Stephanie. That's great. We also added PAC to all of our promotional materials, including our company banner, our rack cards, our business cards, um, anywhere that we could distribute those materials. We made sure that it was displayed at our trade show booth. So now our organization, Paw and Order, is people say, oh, what's PAC? And then I get to talk all about it and say that, you know, we are the only or I was the first. Um, so we, we make, um, we make the most of that. Uh, we wrote about PAC and our individual certifications in our quarterly, quarterly newsletter that we distribute electronically to all local vet shelters and animal rescue groups. So I actually write a quarterly newsletter, have a distribution list for all of the vets in my immediate area, all the rescue groups and shelters, and I send them out a newsletter on what's going on at Paw and Order. And in every newsletter, there's something about PAC. Either new CEUs that have come on board or new uh, staff members that have become certified or how many how many people there are certified in the world. Sometimes I'll share my uh, the PAC, PAC Snacks uh, Spotlight. I've done that before too. Um, we provided a PAC info pamphlet to all of our cl current clients um, at the time of arrival. So a new client that comes to us, we tell them about PAC, we give them a, a PAC handout that we've created. Um, we have at least one PAC element in our client newsletter that goes out quarterly as well to make sure that our clients recognize that we're still associated with PAC, we are still certified and what that means. Um, we added both PAC videos to our Facebook page and our website. So the one that's geared toward the pet parent and the pet pet care professionals. So right on the main page of our website, you can see both of those videos. Um, and I think they are on YouTube, so you, you can share them. You can put them electronically. 
We added our digital badge and the CPACP and CPACO to my electronic signatures and the signatures that come out from any of our certified professionals that work here. We added it to all job postings um, as an asset. So being PAC certified is now considered an asset to, to work here. And it is now an official requirement to become PAC certified within the first 18 months of employment with us. Wow. Um, that has, and if we have the opportunity or if anybody's interested in knowing more about that, that has completely revolutionized how we hire, who we hire, and reduced our turnover rate to less than 10%. And the only people that have left us since we have done that have been people whose spouses have uh, relocated. And then, yeah. of course, I always make sure to mention PAC during any speaking engagements. I speak at some of the local high schools, um, the pet tech uh, training courses at our community colleges, any bios that, that I have to write when I speak at conferences and things, I always make sure they know that I'm PAC certified. Um, so those are, those are some of the things that we've done here at PAW in order to leverage it in the community. You'd be hard pressed in, in, our, um, in our community to find somebody that has not yet heard of PAC. That is awesome. You know, and we tell people all the time, once you once you become PAC certified, don't keep it a secret. Shout it from the rooftops. And uh, you are definitely doing that. That was an awesome list um, of things that, that you are doing. And that brings me to another question. I know um, Heidi is on this call. Heidi owns a, um, a place called, uh, I might say this wrong, Heidi, but I think it's called Bow Chicka Wow Town. Um, up in, in New England here in the U.S. And uh, Heidi was chosen to be a panelist today because her website does an amazing job at um, promoting the importance not only of PAC certification, but just uh, as a um, just general education certification and knowledge. And so the board was really impressed with that. Um, Heidi, um, if you could unmute yourself um, and tell us a little bit about about your website um, and and why, as the owner uh, of your place, you felt it's so important to communicate that and to invest in your team like that. Sure, thank you. So, yep, you got the name right. So, kudos to you. <laughs> um, so, I bought the business. It was existing an existing business that I purchased, and I came from I came from an animal rescue background um, and an unpaid profession, but I had come from corporate America where I was a network engineer. And so the certification process was very prevalent in what I did in my life prior to coming into um, the pet care facility. And <clears throat> carrying that over, when I looked around, it was, there wasn't a lot out there for the staff. So I inherited, um, I don't want to say inherited, so many of the staff members came along um, with me to, to the new business. And just as a way to use this as a measuring stick as to what you know was a fantastic opportunity to be able to tell our clients, you know, not only do these guys and girls, you know, love the dogs, they have proven their knowledge in, you know, basic animal care to be able to take care of your dogs. And that, when we came upon PAC, was super important because I think, um, I'm very impressed that you, um, the previous speaker has, you know, an 18 month um, plan for new hires. Um, I tend to hire a lot of college students that are going to school in the veterinary field. So the longevity is probably, say, you know, anywhere between 18 months to two years. But I do have some staff that have told me that this is this is their passion and this is what they want to do. So how do I show that I believe in them and what better way than to pay for their education, pay for them to become certified so that they are recognized as being professionals, not just people that like to, you know, play with dogs all day, I think was, you know, something that was very important for me. So I'm going to invest in you and then in that you are going to invest in the business by showing your skill set. 
what we do on our website, as you saw, is it's very important for us to be able to promote the education that we provide to our staff. So in addition to PAC certification, um, everybody's required for CPR, pet CPR and first aid certification. And we have a web page on, on our site that's devoted strictly to the team, just a short bio about every team member and um, what they're certified in. And I feel as though it really helps to, again, base that knowledge where our you know franchise competitor down the road is saying they have 100 hours of training and that's it that's the end of the sentence I can say mm -hmm. that we do um, dog gurus training and I can put a link to dog gurus and what that's all about I can say that my, my staff is PAC certified and I can put a link to that parent um, portion of your website so that they understand what they're looking for perhaps they don't choose us to be their provider but they should be looking at the things that PAC stands for when they're going into another facility to ensure that their their dogs are being treated and cared for with you know the utmost um, skill set. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Um, do you mind um, sharing your website? I guess I'm putting you on the spot here, but um, <laughs> um, uh, with us, if you don't mind, you could you could type that into the chat box. Um, your see. name is your name is is uh, pretty recognizable, so I don't think you can keep yourself a secret. Uh, <laughs> Let <laughs> me see if I can figure out how to do that. And, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's fine. Um, um, but yeah, and do you feel you feel like the um, PAC certification and the other certifications uh, resonate with a, a large amount of your uh, pet parents? I do. Um, you know, when you are trying to, <clears throat> you know, win business and onboard a new family to, you know, choose you for their services, the the clients that we want to have, the pets that we want to care for are those that are most informed. They're not price shopping. So mm -hmm. they want to know that when their dogs are here. So we have overnight staff that's here. That's something that's important. So things like that matter to these families when they're choosing someone to care for their family member. They want to know that we're certified in first aid and CPR. You know, we're not doctors, we're not veterinarians, and by all means, you know, I make that very clear. However, we do know how to clean a wound should something like that happen. We do know how to recognize the when it's time to go to a vet versus, you know, we've just been playing hard all afternoon. And that, that type of um, skill set definitely helps us win the business that we want to have. Yeah, and Heidi, the other thing I just wanted to highlight uh, that you mentioned, is you mentioned that you do have some seasonal help that might be there, you know, just 12 months or so. So obviously mm -hmm. those are the team members that we want to, um, um, you know, if it's just kind of a summer job or, or a one-time thing, those aren't the folks that we're looking to um, get PAC certified or at least uh, pay for their PAC certification. But I think one thing that it does do when your other team members are certified, is it, it does set the stage even for those temporary employees to say, hey, just like you mentioned, this is not a place where we just play with dogs. Um, we take this very seriously. This is our profession. This is our industry. Uh, and we value education, safety, health, mm -hmm. and all of that. So even though they're not getting PAC certified, uh, everyone on staff, I do believe that it really um, gets even your temporary employees into the right mindset. Would you agree with that? Do you think it still has some impact on them? No, I definitely agree. Um, you know, from coming in, so the, you know, pet first aid and CPR certification is a little um, easier for us to obtain for the staff as far as being able to host courses here versus, you know, PAC. So that, that's an easy win for us. So right out of the gate, we, we're taking this seriously. Um, yeah. The training that we go through, again, we use our dog gurus, um, Knowing Dogs 101 and Knowing Dogs 201. You have to have gone through that before and shadowed our senior, you know, PAC certified employees before you're allowed to even consider having a group of your own. So the educational component is taken very seriously and it's um, 
reiterated at staff meetings and all through our interview and onboarding process that um, it's more than just coming in and playing with dogs because, I, I mean, let's face it, uh, how many cover letters do you get that say, you know, I just love dogs, you know, mm -hmm. and so we, we love dogs too, but there's so much more to it in being able to send them home happier than when they, they arrived. So all of that comes into play. And again, I keep saying, you know, it's a measuring stick. It's a benchmark. It's saying that my staff has this set of capabilities in order to care for your pet. What does the place down the road have? You'll have to talk to them, but I can tell you what my staff has. And then I can also show you, you can do your own research to, to see what that means and what they've learned. Yep. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Thank you for for sharing that. Um, before we go on to, to um, a couple other uh, points I wanted to bring up, I just want to remind everybody, if you have any questions or comments, we welcome that from, from everybody attending today. Um, so I'll give it a second here. Does anybody want to unmute themselves and ask a question uh, so far? Feel free to do so. Or if anybody else happens to have any wonderful ideas on how they got that out into the community, I am all ears. Yes. Yeah, Stephanie needs some fresh ideas because she's uh, mm. she she's she's got a lot of her own, so she's looking for some more too, as we all are. Well, Heidi um, was mentioned, you know, it's important to her clients. So mm -hmm. how did you make it so important to those clients? Like how did you how did you make it so how did you communicate it to your clients so that they they are talking to their friends about the importance of it that it's something that it's important to them? Is that a is that a question for me? Well, it's kind of a, it's, yes, but it's also a question yeah. to anybody else on the call. Like, what have you done? Like, have, do you have a banner out front? Like, how have you communicated to? I'm interested on yeah, anybody on the call, mm -hmm. how they've communicated to their community and the client group that, hey, we're PAC certified and it's important stuff. Mm -hmm. For us, um, we will do a Facebook announcement when a new staff member becomes certified. Um, we put that in their bio on our team page on our website, which I just put in the, um, the chat window. We also, in our lobby, we have listed our certifications. So the staff members that are certified, we have printed out their certificates and they're on the wall. When we do, so it, obviously the past couple of months have been a little bit different, but when we're doing facility tours and as we're walking through, it's something that we point out. So it's probably not you know, the best answer of, no, we don't have a banner hanging outside of the building. And I'm certainly looking for fresh ideas as well, because it is important for us. We are the first and only facility in the state that has, you know, taken the leap and gone PAC certified. And I'm, I'm proud of the staff that have, have done that. And they should be, you know, they're proud of themselves too, as being the first. How do we, you know, get that out as a differentiator between us and, like I said, the, the franchise down the road? It's it's challenging. I think it's an ongoing conversation when when you're talking to to new families and trying to you know sell yourself like air quotes as to you know why why you're deserving to have their family members stay with you. And Heidi, I love that you include it on your uh, client tours because um, so many pet parents don't know to even ask about that. Um, mm -hmm. What I learned when I had my pet care center is never assume that the pet parent uh, knows anything about what you what you're doing there. So I love the fact that you point that out and, and show them that it is important because a lot of them don't know um, mm -hmm. that that it even needs to be asked or that it even mm -hmm. exists. So that is really awesome. Um, in addition to, to um, unmuting yourself to ask a question or to comment, um, provide a suggestion, you can also type it in the chat box um, if, if, uh, if you're more comfortable with that. So feel free to type anything in the chat box. Um, I do see that we have Katie Cushing on the line. Um, Katie, I think you hold the, uh, the title of having the most PAC certified providers um, or certified professionals here in the US. So I'd love to hear you chime in. Um, about uh, how you use PAC certification and uh, whether it's in your community or in your marketing. Do you mind sharing some ideas? I would love to. 
Um, so we're in uh, Palatine, Illinois. We're a northwest suburb of Chicago. So there's obviously lots and lots and lots of uh, pet care facilities around here. And I started ours in 1994. Um, so we were actually a pioneer when it comes to um, doggy daycare because it didn't exist when I opened up my facility. Now, mostly I'm a, I, I, I'm a professional dog trainer and the, the facility kind of grew up around me. People started asking me, hey, can I drop off my dog for the day? Can you watch him? And sure, why not? You know, can my dog spend the night? Sure, why not? So through the years, you know, I, all these other little places started popping up, calling them doggy daycares, and you, know, you hear the you know the stories of I have a neighbor up the street who left their dog one night, and the dog ended up dying overnight. The first time it was ever boarded at a, another facility, and it's just horror stories about different things. So um, being able to say that we are PAC certified, and not only that, but we have eight other staff members who are certified, uh, and that goes a long way in uh, telling people how proud we are of being um, certified and being able to tell people that uh, in the nation, we have the most uh, staff members that are certified to provide pet care for your pets. Um, it, we have eight of them and then me, I'm nine. So there's nine of us here that do that. Not only that, but you know, we also have the, the canine CPR, um, the dog guru stuff, all that stuff as well. I'm a, big believer in education. And one of the things that really helps us with the having the PAC certification is when we do our hiring, you know, one of the one of the toughest things that we battle is, you know, the people that think they're just coming to play with dogs all day. And by saying that this is part of our curriculum is that you're going to be uh, need to be certified as a um, you know, as a pet care technician, um, it kind of, the people that just think they're here to play with dogs, they, they don't um, continue with their application. <laughs> you know, they don't last very long. And then the people that do, they're really proud of when they get the um, their certification. Um, in the community, I've reached out to um, our, the Department of Zoning, Boarding and Zoning, uh, building and zoning, excuse me, not boarding, but, uh, um, and spoke with the director, uh, Ben. And when I mentioned to him that we have eight staff members that are certified and it, it, to provide pet care, um, and we're the, the only facility in Illinois that has eight at, and in the nation, uh, he was very impressed. So I think, you know, going along and um, helping people understand uh, this type of certification raises your um, your standards and your credibility as mm -hmm. a as a pet care facility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great points. Um, there is a question to you, Katie. How are you preparing your staff to get ready for the test um, outside of knowing dogs one hundred and one and two hundred and one? Um, are there other things that you do to prepare your team? And, and this can really be for anybody, um, Katie or anybody else that wants to chime in, but um, do you have anything to offer there? Um, you know, I've been training dogs since 1988. So a lot of um, the training that I do is a lot of common sense that's not common. And when the staff hears it, they're like, oh, wow, that just makes sense. So I really enjoyed that part, but, um, I have a library of books that uh, I encourage people to, um, you know, read through and, and educate yourself. And um, the AKC website is actually really amazing to, to learn a, a lot about the different groups of dogs. Um, you know, what, what breeds are in each different group, um, anticipating, um, uh, learning the, the uh, we have a personality code that, that I teach as far as um, dogs go. Uh, they're, they're different personalities and um, how that plays in uh, group play. Um, but really it's, uh, I have like uh, a stipend for each staff member to use every year uh, towards education. And um, mm -hmm. it has to be approved. It can't just be, oh, I'm gonna go see this person because I like what they do and I don't know who they are, but you know, 
um, approved uh, um, seminars and webinars and things like that are, are um, I'm happy to pay for them. And that's uh, how I got so many staff members is I told them I will pay for your certification. And as long as you're here in a year, um, you will not have to pay me back. If you don't pass the test, um, you will have to, uh, if you, you'll have to pay for it in a second time. And if you pass it, I won't charge, I, I won't charge you. If you don't pass it, you're going to pay me back. Um, and if you leave before a year, then, um, we're going to prorate the, the cost of the certification. Okay. So that helped a lot in, in getting mm -hmm. all the staff members. that and a handy dandy credit card, <laughs> but it was definitely worth the money, you know, um, the staff is, uh, they're so much more confident in what they're doing. That's great. Yeah, I love i love hearing you say that. That was my next question. Do you feel that it was worth the investment? And clearly, uh, clearly you, you do, because you've done it, you've done it over and over again. Um, yes. Uh, Carrie Campbell, our, uh, our chair of PAC, she's joining us today, and she um, wanted to add uh, via the chat that um, she, in addition to dog ears training, she also has her team complete the IVPSA uh, canine training. So that can also be a, a formalized way to study for the exam. Um, so thank you, Carrie, for, for that suggestion. Um, thanks for all the comments in the chat box. Cindy Carter says, congratulations, Katie. She's super impressed with you having so many people um, uh, certified with PAC and Cindy get ready I'm going to make you I'm going to make you get off mute here because um, I, I know uh, I know you've got some great ideas out there but one person I did want to make sure that we got to was Amy Hillis um, Amy uh, owns a social pet and I believe it's in Charlotte North Carolina or that area um, Amy is also a board member of uh, PAC and uh, and Amy as actually got certified uh, during the pandemic. Um, so Amy, I would love just to hear, because I know that everyone had so much going on. Um, why did you feel it was so important uh, to continue on with that, not to delay uh, the PAC certification? Can you speak to that for a minute or two? Yeah, absolutely. So can you guys hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So yeah, so basically I was scheduled to take the test in March and, you know, I'd studied, I took the pretest, so I was ready to go. And it was right when everything started happening with COVID. And so I was still trying to stay focused on PAC, but I also, of course, had to be mindful of what was happening in my business. And so um, my, I was scheduled to test later in the window. And so my test ended up getting canceled. And so, you know, I really, how to decide what are my priorities right now and of course everyone's priority is their business and making sure that is sustainable during this challenging time but it ended up almost working out because you know our occupancy dropped at each facility by about 75 percent initially and um, while we were trying to figure out everything that was happening um, and just making sure that we were you know stabilizing and still able to be profitable um, I did have some time open up where I could still continue to focus on the PAC test. And it was really critical for me, like everybody else has said, to ensure that we as social pet and me as a business owner could be set apart. We, in Charlotte, North Carolina, we've got right around 100 plus competitors in our market, in our county, and in the surrounding counties. And so um, it's just a super saturated market. And so anything that we can do to set ourselves apart is critical. And we had already accomplished that by doing enrichment daycare. We've been doing that for a few years. And there's some other services that we offer like ballet drop off and pick up and some other things like that. And so it was critical for me to keep my focus on PAC. And I had more time to study because there were less operational things to kind of worry about at the time. And mm -hmm. so I wanted to make sure that we could emerge from this as being set apart from others. And so I really just looked back into my pretest and looked at the areas that I needed to brush up on. And so that's what I focused on. And I was able to um, test in, Joel, or in June, I believe. And, um, you know, it's been great. And it's something that we can market as we come out of COVID or even if we don't come out of it, something that we can continue to market in our community that's 
set us apart from the other competition in the area. Yeah, I, I, I love that. Leveraging your PAC certification um, to, to market your pet care center um, is, is really fantastic. And not only, you know, keep in mind, not only great for your business and for your employees, but also great for the animals. And, and that's what we're all, you know, it all comes down to the animals at PAC. Um, you know, looking to make sure everybody has a healthy and safe experience. So by promoting PAC, uh, not only are you leveraging yourself uh, and your team and your business, but you're also um, making sure that the community is educated on how to keep pets safe. And so if you feel like, oh, you know, I shouldn't, I shouldn't exploit my certification, you're not exploiting it at all. Um, you're actually making our industry safer by educating the community. So I love all of that. Um, Nicole Bennett, she's offered a few suggestions. Um, in the chat box, I have written down a few suggestions in terms of um, that have been offered up by the audience. Um, the, again, the dog viewers materials, IVPSA training and webinars, um, Fetch Find, and um, um, IVPSA webinars. And then uh, Nicole Bennett, uh, thank you for your um, chat. It says, you can only make one first impression, bringing up certification, education, uh, during that first potential client interaction makes all the difference. Um, thank you, Nicole, uh, for that, because I totally, I totally agree, and I think many of us uh, do. Um, so that's fantastic. Um, Anything else, any questions, anybody want to unmute them, themselves or feel free to put it in the chat box if, if you prefer. Um, uh, one person, I, I gave you a warning, Cindy. So Cindy Carter, we would love to hear from you uh, as well. Uh, Cindy, if you could just introduce yourself and um, tell us a little bit about how you use PAC uh, at your pet care center to either uh, leverage your, your business, your marketing, uh, employment. Um, tell us a, a few of your ideas, if you don't mind. Not, a, not at all, not at all. Um, I learned about PAC through Charlotte and the dog gurus, and I didn't really realize it's important until uh, I went to one of the dog guru seminars and uh, talked to, I believe it was Shelly, but anyhow, the impact has been tremendous and it's been a big eye opener uh, to my clients and my community that like Katie mentioned, everybody comes to work for you, wants to play with dogs, but they don't realize that every step we take, every move we make has an intention behind it of keeping the dogs, you know, healthy, safe, happy, social. Um, so, as uh, someone just mentioned before, that first impression when people call, and I mentioned that we're PAC certified, you can kind of tell they, they really don't understand what I'm talking about, but I go into depth about it. And uh, they're like, well, why, why aren't all the, your other people in town PAC certified? I'm like, you know, I'm happy to talk to them about it. There's enough dogs to go around for, every, for everybody. It's about the dogs and keeping them safe. And, um, so I'm all about spreading the word, and I, I feel like we don't have any competitors. We're all here to care for these uh, sweet little doggies, and that's what we're all we're all about. But uh, it's made a big difference, and a lot of people might not jump on our uh, bandwagon right away because of our price. And I think price is real important. I think getting paid for what you're worth and what you're doing and you're educating your staff and you're investing in your staff to, to be sure their pups are safe, you know, you should, you should ask for more money and not give your services away. You know, the people who value you and what you do are going to pay you what you're worth. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a huge takeaway. Mm -hmm. And they I do agree. come back. They, they may go experience the low balls in town, but they do end up coming back. Yeah, I love that point. And I was actually talking, um, Katie, I think I think you're still on the call, um, chatting yeah. with Katie a little bit this morning via text that, 
Um, Katie, I know that that you you in addition are are not the the cheapest one in town, and and um, you know you utilize your your PAC certification in those discussions. Uh, can you talk a little bit to that? Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I find really important is that uh, maintaining the same staff uh, throughout the years because the dogs get used to a certain person or certain people. Um, and, you know, constantly having to train new people, uh, you know, when I have staff that's working for 10 to $12 an hour, they're always saying, you know, I'm going to have to get a part-time job. So by having our staff be PAC certified, I can pay them more money. I can pay them a livable wage so that they can continue to stay here and grow and move up in the company where we have um, different positions that they can move into and different areas that they can grow into um and that helps too with the clients uh they don't see new faces every other week um they see the same staff here and it's just been a win-win for us to have um the certification and the ability to charge more money and tell tell our clients let our clients know hey we've got eight people that are certified to provide pet care um the most in the nation at one facility and we're the first i think i don't I don't think we're still the only facility in Illinois, but we were the first facility to have certified staff members. Um, so it's it's really nice for my staff to be able to be, you know, be able to earn their living and survive and not have to worry about getting a part-time job. They can, This is their job. This is their career. So it becomes a career for them, not just a passing fancy. Yeah. Love that, love that. And again, that all leads back to the safety of the dogs. Having that experience out in the play yard um, certainly makes it a safer place to be. And um, th this brings me back to Stephanie, something that you said earlier, I think that really picked up a lot of people's ears in terms of uh, reducing turnover by 70%. Um, and, and how certification has, has changed that. Um, can you speak to that a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely, Just. Um, when, we put, when we put the expectation or PAC certification as an asset in our job description and our postings on Indeed or wherever you happen to post it, the very first thing that we, we, we achieved, I didn't know at the time that this was gonna happen, but we were able to achieve a very distinct level of professionalism and all of a sudden the applicants that started coming in were significantly better. We were no longer getting, um, I don't even know how to say it, lazy applicants. We were getting people who were like, I'm passionate about pets. I just finished my vet assistant program. I want to work with animals. And the key to me there was I want to work with animals. I'm no longer getting the people who want to come in and play with puppies all day. I don't even have those applicants anymore. And then when we put it in the job description and the um, uh, about be, you know you had 18 months to become PAC certified at whatever level that you're at, um, and we go hard at that during the interview process for a couple of reasons. One, I want to make sure that they understand the responsibility that comes with that. I want to make sure that every person that applies here understands the importance of certification and we take it seriously. And I want them to go home and tell their, their families that, oh my goodness, they, this, place, this place is no joke. Like they need me to be actually certified. Um, so it raised the level of applicants. It minimized the time that I need to spend interviewing applicants because I'm no longer spending a bunch of time interviewing people who just want to play with puppies all day and don't want to do the work to keep them safe, like cleaning, disinfecting, sanitizing, all of that. Learning about, you know, canine behavior, studying, like all of that came with it. And, and now it is so rare that we actually lose somebody. And like I said, the only people that we have lost in the past two years has been, um, people whose spouses have relocated because they're in the military or something. Mm -hmm. Our crew is the same crew and they're a highly skilled, highly trained workforce. And I'm very proud of them for that. Um, and they don't settle. They seem to get the point. They don't settle for good enough. Like it, it's either done right or it's not done well at all because the point isn't to get it done. The point is to keep the dog safe. 
Um, and we talk about it with every tour that we do as well. And, and But the interesting thing, um, and I'll put this kind of out to the group too as a question, is for those of you, like a lot of this call so far has been how are you marketing it and how are you putting it on your website and things like that. But there are people on this call that are uh, pet care specialists or pet care technicians that aren't in charge of marketing or don't maintain the website. But we all, as a certified professional at whatever level, have that responsibility to tell our clients. So I'd love if there are people on the call that aren't owners or managers of a facility who are certified at the provider level and aren't at that level within their organization, I would love to hear how they are promoting their certification to clients. Um, our crew, when they do a tour, they promote the fact that they themselves are, are provider level certified and what that means. Whenever they start a training, they introduce themselves and they talk about pack certification to a, a private trainer uh, situation or a doggy daycare assessment. So, and, and they're out in the community talking about pack. They're not a business owner. They're not a general manager of a facility. They are the person that's cleaning the crap out of the kennels every day and making sure that the dogs are fed, but they took it seriously enough to be certified. And I think every client should know that. Your dog trainers, hey, my name is Stephanie and I'm gonna be working with you training your dog. I'm PAC certified. If you don't know what that means, that's what this means. You made a great choice picking our facility for your training. We have this many or whichever. So are there is there anybody else on this call that isn't at a, a managerial or owner level that that does something to to share the fact that they're um, certified with their family, friends, community, anything like that? I'd be interested to hear from them too. Yeah, and I, I know a lot of people on this call would love to hear that perspective. So hopefully, this, would anybody like to speak up? To unmute yourself, you just push the, um, there's a little red microphone next to your name. You can just push that and that will unmute yourself. Any takers? Or I guess hi, it's Ed, hi. Oh, this, is Ed, this is Ed Kaczmarek from Urban Pooch in Chicago, Illinois. Hey, Ed. Hello. It's so, oh. I, you know, it's so inspirational to hear all of you and you know, Stephanie is one of the reasons why I got my PAC certification, you know, less than a year ago. I think she's the reason a lot of people have it. <laughs> <laughs> so bless her heart for, for giving us a little kick in the butt to do, you know, what we, um, you know, all want to do. But, you know, I have to admit, you know, I got it. I was so excited about it. I told so many people about it. And then I got caught into the, you know, just into like the day to day of the business and I haven't promoted it. And, you know, I'm glad that I joined the call because I'm really going to start promoting it and then also identify, you know, like taught our four top people and have them go through the PAC certification because I do believe, you know, what everyone says and, you know, I, you know, I consider Cindy and Amy and Stephanie and Katie to be, you know, top providers, you know, and leaders in the business. And, you know, I do believe there's so much value we can be extracting from this and promoting it. And, um, you know, I just kind of needed a little kick in the butt to do it after I got the certification. And, um, you know, I just, and I have to say, I enjoyed getting the certification. I in, And I also enjoyed studying for it because I actually, you know, reminded myself of some things that are so easy to forget, yet so important. So I just wanna thank everyone, you know, for, for doing this call, you know, and for creating the certification. And yet, you know what, to be honest with you, Ed, um, there shouldn't be a living, breathing soul in the Chicago area that doesn't know about PAC certification. I know, Ed, you're on this call. I know Katie Cushing is on this call from the Chicago area. 
Deb Shortino is on this call. Jordan Aaron is on this call. And when I look on a map, that's a lot of uh, Chicago suburbs. So you guys got to get up and get promoting the mm -hmm. fact that you are certified and get it. Because, you know, Ed, when you talk about certification and how important it is, even if that's not somebody in your market, that person should be looking. We want the general public to start seeking out PAC certified people. It's only going to benefit all of us and it's going to benefit the pets. So even if they're not PAC, they're, you know, they're not in your area or whichever, get the word out there about PAC certification, the importance and the safety element of it. And you know what? Maybe Jordan or Katie or Deb will gain that client because they are PAC certified. It is that important. So there shouldn't be anybody in Chicago that hasn't heard about PAC. And if there is, then you guys need to get up on your soapbox and start yelling. I think that's a, a great idea that, you know, work together to, to make that known in Chicago and, and really strengthen all your businesses. Uh, that would be really fun to see. I know from the pet work perspective, we would love, uh, we keep talking about that. And these, these, we have a lot of regions where there's pockets of um, several certified uh, professionals. So we would love to see that. And I know if, if anybody's going to make it happen, it's, it's that group of, it's that group of people. Um, about 10 more minutes here on the call. Any questions or comments? Um, from the audience right now. Hey Jess, it's Carrie up in Alaska. Yeah. yeah um, one of the things that I wanted to mention when it comes to promoting the certifications that your staff have right now during COVID, this is probably one of the best things that we can do to promote our businesses because there has been a decline, especially in the lodging areas of people's businesses across the nation. And why not? let clientele or potential clients out there know that as PAC certified professionals, we are held to a code of conduct and we understand more than anyone the importance of having a clean facility, doing everything we can to keep pets safe. And, um, and that is just underlined by the, the certification that we have. So I think it's an awesome tool. And for that group in the Chicago area, what a great way to promote your businesses and come out strong during what is an unprecedented time for all of us in the pet care industry. So mm -hmm. just, just throwing that out there. You know, when, when my original staff uh, were first certified in 2016, we did get a banner that said Alaska's only pack, you know, certified professionals. Um, and we were so excited the day that we had to change our banner to say Alaska's first, because there was finally somebody else in our market that got certified. Um, you know, it's a great thing, but I think it's an even better thing when you realize that having some of your competitors being certified is good too, because obviously one facility can't reach and, and actually serve all of the pets in your community. And to know that there's another facility that's out there that has that same ethic and um, and, and wanting to have their um, their staff being that, that well-trained that um that it's exciting to be uh, not not so much that you're giving referrals to them but that you're able to at least um know that pet parents have have a, another option if you're too full so yeah and uh to to your point stephanie adds that uh facebook videos uh can do tremendous amounts uh in terms of getting that information or facebook live videos um so if you haven't explored that that is uh uh, definitely uh, something to uh, do your hair a little nicer that day, maybe put on some, some makeup and, and get on a Facebook Live or don't uh, yeah. do your hair. You know, I've, I've been there, done that. Um, so um, I know Alex, we, uh, from A Closer Bond, uh, is is on uh, Katie's team. Um, Alex, do you mind sharing um, your comment with us? Alice, do you want to unmute yourself or do you want to um, type that into the chat? Because we can't hear you right now. Um, and chat, yeah, go ahead. No, this, this is Katie. I don't know if she's having trouble figuring out the, how to unmute over there, but um, 
uh, like I said before, you know, first and foremost, we're, we're a dog training facility and she just had a great idea that um, it, we do evaluations for training with the, with the pets and uh, just adding the PAC certification uh, information in that our handouts would be um, really beneficial. That'll really uh, get get PAC out there and, and let, let people know that uh, uh, we believe in the education, the certification and how, how important it is, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to, to have that certification. I went yeah. around and offered twenty dollars to each of my staff members who are listening <laughs> to make a comment, and uh, <laughs> she got one. That'll so, do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and I think that's great too. Putting it in your in your physical materials because people get so overloaded with information when they come for a tour. So um, to really hammer the point home when they go home and they read your information, I think that that's great to add that. Um, there because so many things can slip by. Um, we are here in our final minutes. Um, if you have any final comments, please feel free to type them in. In addition, we would like to, and you can send this in the chat, email, or comment. Um, if you'd like to see more calls like this, uh, whether they're, they're um, centered around uh, your PAC certification or any other topics that you all want to discuss amongst each other, uh, please let us know your interest level because we would love to get this community um, chatting. And I already see that people uh, the, the, have a good response to this. Um, if you have any suggestions for topics, uh, go to our website, type them in. Our um, assistant, our virtual assistant, Elena, will pass them on. Uh, to the team. So let us know if there's specific topics that you want to address and we'd be happy to uh, coordinate that or anything else Pat can do to assist. Um, we are open to any suggestions. We have such a great community of people and now that we've established this community and we have a great numbers uh, so far, we're, we're really pleased. Um, we uh, want to get this community talking more. And like we said, um, how awesome will that be if, if you guys in Chicago can really use it to leverage uh, your small group of businesses in such a large city um, to differentiate yourself from everybody else. Um, any other final words, uh, Stephanie, Carrie, anything else that you would like to say to close out the call? You know, Jess, I, I just, I just, I'm going to let Carrie clean it up at the end because she is our chair. But I wanted to thank everybody for making the time to be here. Um, we want, we, uh, the board of directors of PAC are very, very passionate about what our mission is and uh, improving the lives of the pets that come into our care, um, improving the lives of the employees uh, that we employ, uh, employ uh, improving the lives of ourselves as owners or managers or pet care providers or at whatever level that uh, you're certified at. Um, the one thing that I will remind you, please make sure you check your recertification date. Don't forget to work toward your CEUs. If uh, if you are an IBPSA member, there's I believe you will have access to all of that online material that's coming with uh, the Pet Care Conference until the end of March. And by the way, there are 30 plus hours of stuff in there. So for those of you who are owner operator and you need 30 CEUs to renew, that's a great way to get it. So. Um, don't forget that you can get CEUs by submitting questions, uh, exam questions. You can get CEUs if you if you um, submit an application, if you take a local course that you feel is in line with PACS Code of Ethics. So we really want to make sure that everybody knows when their certification uh, expires and not to let it lapse because all of us sitting on this call went through sitting at that desk taking that exam and it was nerve-wracking and i'll tell you i don't ever want to do it again so i'm not going to let mine lapse um so carrie i'm going to pass it over to you maybe if you can close this out Look. absolutely i just want to again thank everybody for participating in the call and we would love to hear your feedback on what the board can do to help you help you promote the the certified professionals that you have working for you um, and any other areas that you may feel we could uh, increase the outreach in your communities because that's what we want to do. Um, you know, our, our original mission was to get the exams up and running and now that we have all three levels 
um, that are being tested uh, three times a year, we want to do what we can to really increase the reach of PAC's message and mission and, uh, and help you promote that in your communities. So uh, please feel free to reach out to our website, which is PAC cert.org and um, and give us your feedback about this call and any other topics that you would like to have um, another call about and anything that we can do to help promote um, PAC in your community. So thank you all for um, for your time this morning and um, and for having your staff certified and for believing in what our mission is. We really appreciate you. Sounds good. And a copy of the recording will be posted on the Certified Professionals uh, Members Only page. So if you'd like to watch it again or have one of your team members watch it, uh, you'll see the recording up there, uh, I would say, in the next 24 to 48 hours. All right. Thank you, everybody.